and welcome everybody. This video we're talking about file shares. Now, if you know the back end for Microsoft 365, everything is driven out of SharePoint. So whether you share things with OneDrive and you invite people to a particular directory off your home drive, or you have a SharePoint site, obviously, or you have Teams as your storage, you're going to be using SharePoint as the back end. So we have quite a few ways of sharing files. As I say, the first one is the, the individual share uh, for OneDrive. So in this scenario, look, we've got our migration done, you would have seen in the last videos. Um, and we've got Carl and Russell here on the screen, and they are part of the, let's call them the finance team. They want to be able to share files with each other. Carl could set up a finance directory in his OneDrive, and he could share it out with Russell. And that's a perfectly valid way of doing it in a very small scenario. What we would prefer to do is to have them either using SharePoint properly as the back end, uh, or we could use Teams. So for this video, I'm going to show you how to set it up with SharePoint. And in the uh, subsequent video after this one, we'll do it with Teams. But for this video, we'll concentrate on SharePoint. So what we'll do is we'll jump across to the SharePoint Admin Center. Now that is just down here. SharePoint takes us into this. And you can see we don't have anything really set up in SharePoint so far. Uh, nothing at all, in fact, apart from that main um, home site, which we have. So we're going to create a brand new site here. We just hit create and you've got, a, you've got a couple of options. We can have a team site or a communication site. Now, remember this here shouldn't be confused with a Microsoft Teams site. Um, something that some people actually look at and say, oh, it's setting it up for Teams. It's not. It's a team site. Really, it's providing a space within SharePoint to collaborate with your team. And this is the one we're going to use for this communication site is about having uh, like a like an intranet or something for your company. So the team site is the one we're going to use here. So we'll click on that. So for the site name, we're going to call this one finance. It gets its own little group email address, which we can change. If you want to change it, you can just hit in there, but it gets the, the standard one. And you can see here, there's our site, um, site slash finance. It wants us to put in a group owner. So I'll put in Carl as the owner for that one. There. And English, if we look at the advanced settings, um, we get some privacy settings on there. So I'm going to put the time zone so it is actually where I am. And uh, uh, this is the oh, spell. I don't have share. And hit next on that. Now, for members, we are going to add Russell, and we know we're going to have Russell in there. Um, Carl, because he's an owner, obviously automatically member as well so we'll just hit that and finish we can add people later on obviously this is not obviously the uh, main thing we can have um but yeah there we go there's our finance um site set up so just a little bit of housekeeping on the uh, permissions and ownership here if we click on finance inside sharepoint you can have a look at the permissions and you'll see it's group based so when you come down here um site owners finance owners and site members is finance members. Now this is obviously good practice to have it set up like that. Where you find those groups, if you go to active users on this side and go to active teams and groups, you'll find they are Microsoft 365 groups. There's our finance group here. So if we go into here, you'll find that under membership here, and it, that was that finance share I was putting in before, you notice that uh, we have the owners and we have the members. So this is where we would add and remove people as we need to, as I say, from the active teams and groups inside the main admin center, not from inside the SharePoint console. So let's have a look at what we're doing from a user perspective. Now this is Carl's workstation, and you can see this is standard sort of user setup here. As you'll notice, we've got Outlook running, and down here, he doesn't get an email to say, hey, you've been added to the finance group, um, into his mailbox. What he will get, is he is now a member of that group. Remember the Microsoft 365 group. So he now has this option down here to go into groups and you can see any groups that he's a member of get added down here. So when we look at this, you'll find here's the email saying your new finance group is ready. And that's where you can then go into um, these particular items. So this is where he would see it. So if I say add to the team site, start sharing, collaborating content, we go in there, then you'll get, let me just make it a little bit bigger, that's the linkage there that he goes into for the first time. And that's the one you saw on that main screen, the, uh, the SharePoint.com with the 
site slash finance. So this is the SharePoint site that we've set up. And we're like, okay, well, that's great. That's a SharePoint site, wonderful. What do we do with this? Because obviously there's a lot in here. All they want to do was share files, right? So you'll find that there's a documents tab here. And that's what we go and click on. So this is the place that they would share files. And you might think, okay, well, that's great. They can put new files in here. Let's say we put a, a spreadsheet in here. That's great. It's going to use it inside the web console. That's wonderful. We're going to put, uh, let's put some, some sales figures in. You know, something really silly like that. Okay, so that's the financial data they wanted to share. And, okay, yep, let's view this in office. Great. And we might say, good, we're going to call this, and we'll call it December. And that's all well and good. Now we can close that one out. So let's just come here and close that. We might think, okay, well that's um that's not bad. So I will change the name in a second. You'll see that change over. And if we go in as Russell, he's going to have access to the same thing. It'll be a standard directory which he's going to get. Now, um, again, that's a standard way to do things on the web inside Office, but there is a better way to do this. Now you'll notice this little button here that says sync. Now, if we look at his OneDrive, you'll find that on his machine, we have documents. And that was the stuff we migrated before, you'd remember. It's all good. Um, but you'll find also that he can obviously you know, share files in here. And there's nothing else around the company setup yet. OK. Now, let me show you what we do here. If we go back here and hit sync, what it will do is it will hook up his OneDrive to start syncing the company shares. Now, if we say, yeah, we're OK with that for the future. Now it's going to start syncing those files that he's got there down onto his desktop. I'll say desktop, I mean his machine, but you get the idea. Now, if I just go back out and look at this here, we should see pretty soon what's going to happen. Excellent. Okay. All right. So you can see it's just taking a few seconds. But look, we're now syncing finance documents, right? And you can see down here we have the company OneDrive in here rather than the personal OneDrive. And look at this here finance dash documents and inside December 2022. So let's suppose we do normal usage of a machine. I might call this one. Um, January 2023. That second, it will change the name. Okay, like this. And if we go into this file here, it will run up in Excel. And we'll put in. Whatever, doesn't matter what it is. Okay, we're going to move that and close that one out. And you'll see we'll um, appear here. Now, notice these little symbols. The little tick means that it's synced onto the machine and is also synced up to the cloud as well. And this one means it's cloud only. So the first time we bring this one down, it's going to uh, download the file for us. So with that, you can see there it goes, downloads, and off it goes into Excel. Thanks for the auto save. So we'll put in an extra. So you can see we're starting to use the machine how we'd normally use Excel. And we've got these uh, this share going on, and we've got access to files. We can have directories and all kinds of tons of files in there. I just want to show you these little things here. This little arrows means that it's going to be syncing back up to OneDrive. And if we look at here, OneDrive, you can actually see what it's doing as it's been doing it. So that's all good. But let's just come back to the cloud settings here. Let's go back into here. You see there's our January 2023. There's no reason why we can't right, grab this one here. And obviously do rename, look at yeah, anything we need to with the file. But if we open it, we can say open in desktop app. And it's actually in here. So open in desktop app. You don't have to run it straight away. You can say yes, we want to always open that. 
all the way it goes and brings it in straight away. So you didn't have to go down to your machine if you didn't want to. You can just edit like that as well. But I know I'm flying around a little bit, but you get the um, get the idea of what I'm talking about. Yeah, because if we were to go back to here, you could here and say open. You can say open an app. So various options on how to do it, but essentially, if for the old school among us, what we're looking at is this type of thing here. Now, this is obviously um, my preferred way of doing it personally. Sync it all down to your machine, and you're good to go. You can hit, or you can right click here and say always keep on this device, which means that everything that comes down, uh, sorry, everything that gets loaded onto that share will automatically get loaded onto your computer as well. So if Russell puts a ton of documents there as well, they will appear on your machine too. And you can see this little tick box is now filled in with green. Filled in green means it's, it's available on your machine too. Um, so of course you don't have to be on the internet. You can just do whatever you need to do, change things, and then when you're back on again, it's going to upload those, those changes and differences for you. But you can both be in the same file at the same time. Um, you would collaborate on exactly the same document, whether you have it on your desktop app or whether you have it on your on the web app, doesn't matter. It will collaborate uh, quite beautifully together. So, so there you go. That's a quick overview of the SharePoint site and how to create a data share or a team of however many people you need using just SharePoint as the back end for it. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do exactly the same thing, but using Microsoft Teams instead of just using SharePoint. So look out for that one next. And uh, I know I always say it, but you know what? Hit that subscribe button for me. That'd be awesome. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.